How long did it take you uh, from the time you graduated high school to finally land a full-time job? So yeah, about about three years, give or take. This is the thing that's always that, that's always been on on my mind, and just it, it, it'll just never fucking leave, no matter how many years pass. It's like I put in so many job applications, not a single fucking place reached out to me. Hi, it's me, Tin Till Death, formerly known as Rogelio Capone. It seems that we're in a time period in America where it's kind of like we're repeating history, and if you look at studies, in a way, you know, with each generation, with time itself, we do repeat history to a certain extent. So when you go back to the early 1900s, you had what was known as the Lost Generation, a generation of people as we're entering the new era, the new millennium into the early 1900s, the industrial era, the age of machinery, you know, the age of new governments. A lot of the people at that time in America felt lost. No direction, really where do they go? And it seems that now with Gen Z, you know, we have a very similar situation. What's going on with Gen Z? Why do Gen Zers feel, you know, they have no motivation, no direction in life? They feel like everything's put against them. What's going on really? Yeah, right now we're currently on vacation. I barely got any sleep last night. I actually started driving right after work, so like around 2.30 a.m. Got over here around fucking 8.30 a.m., took a 30 minute nap, and so I'm running on Red Bull. A lot of times we're told, hey, you know, work hard or do this or do that. So what happens when someone does do everything? What happens when someone goes through all the necessary steps to try to find, you know, try to find a job? try to, you know, move forward in life, but they can't. And that's what you guys are gonna see here with one of my best friends, Samurai J. So for many decades in America, even going as far back as the Vietnam War era of the 70s, there was this constant motto many people grew up with, many generations grew up with. If you work hard, if you do these things, if you act nice and respectable towards others, you'll get to this certain point in life. But we're, we're almost to his house over here in Stanton. Well, more so his grandma's house. Man, look at this place. I haven't been here in over a year. I actually, you know, I haven't lived over in this area in Brownsville, Tennessee, Stanton, Tennessee since uh, 2017. So when I was driving through here, because I only visit like once a year now, holy fuck, it was like the economy was booming, dude. They had new restaurants. They had new businesses open up from the time when I was going you know, to high school over there. So I'm like, damn, things have been improving. I realize it creates more jobs for people. It helps people out. So I think that's a good thing. As America was, you know, approaching the 50s, we were starting to enter an age where it's like, okay, you do have the common man who can work hard for, you know, for money, can work hard for goods. But around that time period in America, you know, there was a correlation between capitalism and what we have today where, you know, corporations were starting to take advantage of, uh, you know, just a common everyday man in America, common everyday woman as well. And it's very sad that we've got to that point. Hey, yo, it's the man, it's the myth. It's the legend. Get in, boy. <laughs> Woo, Tang, Woo, Tang, say hi, Samurai. What's up, niggas? <laughs> yo, chill with the N-words. Yo, 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 it's the man, it's the myth. We're gonna dab him up real quick, dab him up. Oh, oh. Man said he's not ready for the emo look, my guy. <laughs> he's not ready for the emo look. So we're on our way to fucking Nashville. What fucking time is it tomorrow? Oh, so fuck it, it's uh, one forty three. All right, so uh, why don't you, if you don't mind, you can tell him now, you can tell him later. 
How the fuck did you get to this point in your life, man? Alcohol. Lots and lots of <laughs> Okay, okay. Samurai Jay, his situation was very different. You know, his mom kind of lost her job at that time. Kind of, you know, car issues, and he didn't even have a car. And I remember, he did apply for almost every job in the area. He couldn't find no job in his area because he was in a very small, you know, closed off town that almost had no jobs. So we applied for jobs outside of his area. How long did it take you from the time you graduated high school to finally land a full-time job? I was 17, so I got hired there at 20, so yeah, about, about three years, give or take. So he kept applying and applying for nearly three years, and over this time, and this is what tends to happen, it can happen with any human being, when you repeat failure constantly enough times in your life, it does decrease your self-esteem, even make you act out and do things you've never done before. It can lead to alcohol addictions as a way of coping. I felt like so shitty. It was like It just felt like I wasn't really like, it felt like I wasn't really good enough, but at the same time, it's like, at the same time, it's like, I don't really have that much to work with anyway. And I had to like walk all the way to the fucking library in order to use their internet to or in order to like, you know, put in job applications. I would just go there from the time they opened to like an hour before they would close. Cause like, I just didn't feel like going home. Yeah, it did make me feel like, you know, it didn't make me feel like giving up. And for, you know, Samurai Jay and even me at that time in my life, I didn't know proper coping mechanisms. He didn't know either. So, you know, he did turn to alcohol to relieve stress. And that's the thing with a lot of young men in, you know, Gen Z and past generations, they did turn to alcohol to relieve stress and cope because they didn't know any other way to cope. So the question we should be asking ourselves is, why does Gen Z feel so unmotivated? Why do they have low self-esteem issues? Why do they feel this way? Why do they feel so lost? Well, there's many contributing factors. Now, most people will just point to one area of fault, one area of blame, but there's multiple factors. Each generation has their own faults, their own things that do affect their generation. With Gen Z, they're, you know, it's very interesting, really, because it's a multitude of factors. Where we go? Yes, sir. That's the way. Hopefully not to our death, but I mean, doom, death, same thing. They're probably broken up by now, let's be real. <laughs> yeah, they're Oh my gosh. So a lot of fear and uncertainty has come within recent years with the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, lockdowns. They had no clue. They've never dealt with something like this in their life before. So it's something entirely new to them. Not also just COVID-19 that's affected Gen Z and you know, their mental states as well. School shootings have made a lot of Gen Zers, a ton of Gen Zers feel, you know, they're not safe in this country. It does affect them mentally. And this isn't just a Gen Z thing, you know, each generation before Gen Z does have social, you know, social events that happened in their time period that did affect that generation. All right, so it's like 11.48 p.m. over here. Wait, wait, the fucking clock over here is like 1. I'm not sure if the time switched over, but Jamarius, tell him what the fuck did we do the last fucking 10 hours. <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't, I don't even fucking know. This guy is a fucking, uh, this guy is a, a fucking video game monster, but nobody will kick my ass in Tekken. I've been playing that shit since I was a kid, but I'm running on, like, barely any sleep. He knows, he knows. I've been awake over 24 plus hours, y'all. I'm fucking tired. Whoa, fuck it, fuck it.
collect for you dope fiend niggas and rap. Hey, 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 hey. Fuck up my sound, I get down. In 89, I spit the book in the face of every MC. It came with a place, a scar I'll never erase. Most people don't know about Samurai J's situation or people like Samurai J. So, you know, he did turn to alcohol to relieve stress. And that's the thing with a lot of young men. They did turn to alcohol to relieve stress and cope because the fact of the matter is a lot of men in america have been raised on this mindset of oh you need to toughen it out quit being a baby quit crying and we've come to find over the decades really that that way of thinking is not healthy how do you think that they should teach people men like you growing up in society knowing the circumstances you had to go through the first three years of your life after high school what do you think they should teach men instead I believe they should start off by saying this. Obviously, not everyone's gonna have the same path, you know, leaving high school. We all know that. What they should also say is like, not everyone's gonna have an easy time in job searches and stuff. Usually, a lot of times, that all depends on you know where you happen to live at. Like you know us, for example, where we, where we lived at at that time, brother. Oh man, trying to find trying to find jobs is a pain in the ass, especially if you don't have a car. Yeah, and you guys were living like in the middle of nowhere, so you couldn't really walk to work if you did manage to find a job. Yeah, yep, exactly. MCs are only recognized for the flows. I'm all wide for the bitches that I turn into hoes. You heard me spitting on you ass. That's how them go. For all the faking ass niggas and how I bust up their nose. And while your nose is dripping, it drain the blood. I'll be standing over you screaming, nigga. What? 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 Oh! Now, there are times in your life where you are going to have to, you know, just get over things. There are times where you do need to let those feelings out in a healthy manner. And what we've came to find out is when people have let those feelings out in a healthy manner, hey, you know, it does, you know, it helps. It might help boost their confidence a bit, might help boost their self-esteem. It might, you know, help make them to make better choices. But when you keep repeating those failures like Samurai J and your self-esteem does get lower, you do feel like you're a failure. And that's one of the things with a lot of Gen Z men right now. A lot of them feel like failures. So their self-esteem is lowered and they're, you know, they're not willing to take more risk because they feel like every time they take a risk, they keep failing, they keep failing. So the question is, they're at this point mentally, why would I want to take a risk really? And it's not just exclusive to Gen Z. Cause the stormy day is coming when you see me so calm it's on no more twin blocks they jam on my place now it's 2040 caliber walter pvk i'm in control of my game you must respect me like the rep uh-huh you disrespect you get the damn man it's the fucking the fucking hand thing like shit Damn! I'm the illest nigga doing this, dead or alive. Gloria Gaynor on you motherfuckers. I will survive. You can try to come and test me, but do you want the kickback? You snap inside the cage of a pit and you get beat back. Huh? My wallet's so tight, my drama's so ill. Beef with me hangs around like an unpaid bill. I push his lyrics to any MC and make it burn some of the niggas who be rhyming next. Oh, Mr. Turner, we the speaker who's a focus MC. I don't come up, we the speaker who's a lava MC. I stay one up, what's up? I got stripes, so he got strikes and both. Do it, bitch, niggas do best. Right, you need to do it. Damn, shit. Green boy, bump me this track, so I'm gonna let you know. Before I slide, I'm gonna leave with this Jew. Even mechanics walk around with their tools and stuff. Damn, son. Oh, that shit was hard as fuck. Yeah, I know for a fact I probably fucked up a couple of those, but I just. I just try my best to keep it going, man. Okay, yo, we're over here at fucking College Park, and this is Jackass, part two. We're gonna slide down this fucking <laughs> Okay, okay. Jamari, is he gonna do it too? He said he's not gonna do it, but he said he'll, he'll watch me, so Jamari, do me the favors and record this shit if you don't mind. I'll, uh, he's already on record, so here, just hold that. God damn, bro, slow the hell down. Bro, slow down. Shit. This boy right here. Can't see crap. Jesus. Alright. Alright. Jack and Pass part two. Uh it's been a minute since I've done this, so I guess. Uh oh.
<laughs> Get wrecked, boy. <laughs> Get wrecked. That was jackass. <laughs> now, one solution does not work for all, and that's the thing that a lot of Americans tend to forget. Almost everybody is different in their own mindset. Everybody has their own kinks and things that make them unique. So what may work for Tommy may not work for Billy. What may work for Tammy may not work for, you know, Pamela. Things work different for different types of people. You know, growing up, what were some of the things you were taught going forward into your life? Things that would benefit you going forward? Well, one of, one of the things that I've always heard was the good old fashioned, you know, oh, hard work pays off, blah, 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 which, to an extent, they're right, but sometimes, hey, you, you, you gotta learn that sometimes no matter what you do, sometimes it just don't work out, you know what I mean? And the whole thing of like, oh, the only way you're gonna make it in life is uh, you gotta go to college, stay out of high school, man. And you know, you gotta, you know, willingly put yourself in debt and, you know, go find a job in that field to, you know, work yourself out of that debt, which they always seem kind of, which I didn't really, at first, I didn't really pay attention to it too much. And then it wasn't like until halfway through my senior year, I'm just like thinking about all that stuff. It's like, why would I willingly put myself in debt? And it's getting to the point to where there are some things that if you want to get ahead in life, sometimes you kind of have to do that shit. Like, like say, you know, trying to get a house or get a car or you know, shit like that. With Gen Z, I think we've come to discover that a lot of men feel lost because a lot of the events that have gone on during our Gen Z lifetime, of course, with their already low self-esteem and they take it into their life, they take it into certain situations in life like dating, it actually ends up hurting them worse and it affects them even much worse off mentally because they don't know. They're, you know, they're not aware that it's these mental issues. It's this low self-esteem. It's not being able to come to terms with reality and assessing their own situations that's mentally affecting them and it ruins their life long term. So what the fuck have we been doing the last couple of days, Samurai? Give them a little short rundown. Well, last night, we got incredibly fucked up. This man got high and drunk as a motherfucker. <laughs> I drank a whole fucking thing of fucking four loco and on top of that. Got me a fucking angry orchard. Shit was falling. I didn't really feel no shit with the damn um, with that damn gummy. He's not alone. Yeah, he had some of that. Yeah, but mind that shit with the alcohol, bro. Mm. Dudes is in outer space. Uh. It felt like the first time I ever got drunk, bro. Yeah. And so for a lot of Gen Zers, you know, they are looking at different ways to cope. They're all, they are looking for answers because they feel like they have been failed. But they're not the first generation that feels that way. If you even go back to the Vietnam era, there was a lot of Americans at that time questioning what they were taught. A lot of Americans were questioning their own government. You know, we just fought World War II. We just finished Korea. Why do we have to go to another war? Who are we fighting for? And they're looking for answers. What did we do the day before that? The day before? Yeah. Oh man, we just went, we just went all around town, man, just kicking. That one mall, bro. We went to this one mall, bro. In Nashville? <laughs> yeah, thought it was the same one that we went to, you know, last year, which I guess it was, but someone just changed. I ain't have that giant ass chest board with me. I'm like, what the fuck is this chest board, bro? <laughs> Not even just that. It's like, the bother I was getting from all those other people, bro. Imagine this. Imagine a punk rocker and a hip hop head going to a mall that's made for fucking Swifties. Yeah, that's pretty much what it was. And we went to the barcade that night. Day four out of six, I believe. Yeah, day four out of six. Oh, day four out of six. <laughs> it's kind of hard to keep track when you're fucking, you know, having so much fun and shit. Yeah, it's like, so, so far today, we took this kid to the UPS store, and uh, who's that in the back? Who's that in the back that starts with the letter R and ends with Shura? Oh, <laughs> dude, this man is a god, dude. He bought us all Taco Bell and stuff. I supplied the drinks. Fucking praise me. Yeah, so we all been having a good homie moment in here. Okay, 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 William, tell tell him the story. Tell him the story. Ah, oh, no, ah, oh, William, no. What's the story? What's the story? 
a lot of times when you try to find answers, it could lead to very unhealthy lifestyles. So you take a lot of Gen Zers, both men and female, they are, you know, looking for answers. And what tends to happen is they do find answers that do hurt them worse off. Answers that aren't the real answers. You do have a lot of Gen Z men right now that are turning to MGTOW and they think MGTOW is the true answer. They tell you to all, they tell you to, you know, always be, you know, this certain way and stuff. You know, always, you know, treat the girls right and shit, which I do believe that you should do that, yes. But what they don't tell you is that, is that to only reserve that treatment for girls that actually deserve it. And you know, there's certain girls out there that are scumbags, just like there's certain guys out there that are scumbags. Some of them are taking the worst parts of MGTOW and then they're wondering why they can't, you know, why nobody wants to date them. They look to MGTOW as their, you know, their life solution. They're constantly degrading women. They never approach women. And then they wonder why they're single. Because of those low self-esteem issues, you don't got the confidence to approach women. So of course, you know, you're not gonna be able to start dating and eventually get a relationship. And same for, you know, feminist extremists. There's a lot of them where they did have bad experiences, traumatic experiences growing up. So, and this is the thing with trauma that a lot of people don't realize. What tends to happen with trauma is that if certain people or events or environments or settings are associated with a traumatic experience, long term your mind might associate those things with bad, you know, with, you know, things being bad. The important part is, you know, trying to figure out, you know, which ones are actually worthy of the time and, you know, you know, give those that special treatment. And, you know, I give that same advice to the girls up there. So here we are, day five out of day six. We're walking our thick, sturdy doggo. This is the emo dog from the TikToks. And Samurai's just over here taking a walk with us. We just had some nice ass pizza, didn't we, my guy? He said he came for the pizza. What are you talking about? You told me how you got moist over the pizza. Oh yeah? What exactly did I say? He said he's about to show this small white petite pizza that what that BBC kid. That ends up on the internet. You know, growing up, what were some of the things you were taught about life? Things that would benefit you going forward? One of, one of the things that I've always heard was the good old-fashioned, you know, Oh, hard work pays off, blah, 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 which, to an extent, they're right. But sometimes, hey, you, you, you gotta learn that sometimes no matter what you do, sometimes it just don't work out, you know what I mean? And the whole thing of like, oh, the only way you're gonna make it in life is like, you gotta go to college, stay out of high school, man. And you know, you gotta, you know, willingly put yourself in debt and, you know, go find a job in that field to, you know, work yourself out of that debt. At first, I didn't really pay attention to it too much. And then it wasn't like until halfway through my senior year, I'm just like, thinking about all that stuff is like why would I willingly put myself in debt and it's getting to the point to where there are some things that if you want to get ahead in life sometimes you kind of have to do that shit like like say you know trying to get a house or get a car or you know shit like that as soon as I turn 18 or a little bit before then I'm gonna start you know putting in all these job applications and shit and then next thing you know Certain things happen to where we didn't have any means of transportation, so couldn't necessarily find a job. And I lived out in the country, and there were like no places nearby that I could walk to. I don't think anybody was hiring over at that gas station, so options were fairly limited. So for the first year or so, we didn't really have no transportation. And then, you know, Pops helped us out with this truck and shit. But still, still, you know, doing all those job applications. And this is the thing that's always that's always been on on my mind and just it, it, it'll just never fucking leave no matter how many years pass it's like i put in so many job applications not a single fucking place reached out to me well there was one place that I actually did get an interview for it was the subway over at pilot got an interview and everything man but still didn't get the job homie i'll put in applications like places like out of town nearby towns 
all that shit, man, just nothing for the most part. And eventually I did go through the temp agency and I got a job at this, um, at this one factory. I figured, okay, all I'm gonna be doing is packing fucking boxes. How hard could that shit be? I won't get into, won't get into too many details, but let's just say it didn't work out. And then eventually during like the end of 2019, I ended up working the fucking um, holiday season at the GameStop where I live at. And it was actually pretty fun for the most part. I really wish I did get, I did get to be there full time, but you know. Is it temp job? Yeah, temp job, holiday season, you know how that stuff goes. Yeah. The whole thing about everyone says, oh, uh, everything, you can do anything you want as long as you set your mind to it, which, I mean, it's true in some cases, but sometimes you just kind of have to be realistic and be like, look, man, this is just not cut out for me, and sometimes you just gotta, you know, say that and just try something else. And one thing that I will say to everybody, don't be afraid, don't be afraid to admit that you were wrong about certain things, you know what I mean? This is the last day. We're driving this guy home. We just got done at the Aubrey Mills Mall making some deliveries, quote unquote. Quote unquote. Yo, you guys will see. You guys will see. You'll know. Samurai, how you feeling? How you feeling? Well, pretty fucking bummed out that I gotta go back to that hell hole where I live at. But overall, these past few days, it's been pretty fucking He said he got a blowjob in a girl's restroom. That's the way. <laughs> so do you have any closing thoughts as we uh, drive back? Well, I'll say this. These uh, past few days, it's been a, it's been a real life. I kind of decided that not only, not only am I going to change up my life a little bit, but I'm going to try to be a little bit more confident in myself. Of course, it's not going to happen overnight. Most things don't happen overnight, but... It'll be a learning process, but hey, it'll happen. That's the way, man. That is the only way. Confidence. For all you motherfuckers out there, man, confidence is key. Because listen, listen, I don't know whoever is watching. I don't know what you're going through in your life right now. But confidence, man. Confidence. It's not easy to get there. It's not easy to get to that stage. But just being confident in yourself, accepting you, you might fail. And that's okay. You might fail. But you got to fail the you know, to win. You gotta take some losses just so you know. Learn from your mistakes. You can say, well, I just don't gotta do this or this anymore. But you know, staying closed in isn't gonna always work forever if you're trying to get to a certain point. Gen Z right now, they do seem to be lost. They do, you know, they do need better guidance. I think, you know, we should start taking mental health more seriously because this is our future right now. Before Gen Z, millennials were our future. Before them, baby boomers, Gen X. We got to truly help guide the next generation. We, we can't, you know, control what they do, but we need to guide them to being better leaders, to being better for themselves, because if they're better for themselves, imagine who they influence. Imagine the lives they'll affect in the future. Imagine what they can do for our country. Imagine what they can do for others. It's not about controlling the next generation. It's not even about controlling other people's lives. It's about helping people assess reality, assess things are hard, assess that, you know, life really is, you know, times you have to take risks. You will take losses, but you, you don't need to let those losses affect, you know, you moving forward in life. It's really hard. How do you teach people these things that, you know, their self-esteem is too low for them to want to accept these things? How do you teach people these things? It's not about controlling the next generation. It's about guiding them. Because the next generation is Gen Alpha. So what are we going to do when Gen Alpha starts showing their problems? They're already having technological problems. They're already having technology affect their lifestyle. So what happens 15 years from now when they need guidance from Gen Z? But Gen Z can't guide them. Millennials can't guide them. Who do they turn to?
She cries.